Dr. Saifur ready ke? Yes, yes. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good evening to everyone. First and foremost, thank you for joining our live webinar on authentic assessment brought to you by CDAE, CDAE USM. I'm Munira, your host for today. Before we get started, let me provide you with a brief overview of what we were covering for today. Today, we are we will go into some of the key finding and concept that we have emerged from the color here project our focus in on the authentic assessment and its imp implication for learning outcome we will be exploring why authentic assessment is cru crucial in today's educational landscape and how it can contribute to more robust of learning objective now, without further delay, we allow me to introduce our panel of speakers who will be sharing their expertise with us today. Our first speaker is Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Saiful Bahri Yusof, Director of Center for Development and Academic Excellence, CDAE USM, and also uh, Associate Professor at the Department of Medical Education, School of Medical Sciences, USM. Joining us next is Dr. Nur Asniza Isha, a senior lecturer from School of Educational Studies, also from USM. Both speakers have been actively involved in the Call Here project and have contributed significantly to our understanding of authentic assessment practices. We are very honored to have both of you with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not keep you waiting any longer and get started with our session for today on authentic assessment inside from Color Here project. Without further delay, please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Saiful Bahri Yusuf. Silakan, Dr. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon everyone. Um, thank you so much uh, for the kind introduction. So before I start, just to um, now get confirmation, uh, everyone can hear my voice clearly? Clear. Okay, okay, good. All right, so thank you so much. All right, so now let's start with um, the sharing session. I think there's something that uh, you know, uh, we have seen a lot today. So if you're looking at this cartoon, uh, you know, during the interview, you know, sometimes uh, students did well in their exams, but when it comes to the real world, um, the exam skill doesn't really help them. You know? So this is where um, you know, uh, the Kalohia project looking into uh, authentic assessment so that we can help our students to be uh, be prepared in the real world uh, later on when they graduated. All right. So um, today, a webinar will cover only two uh, main uh, main outcome actually. So perhaps I think uh, we are going to touch a lot more a lot about the concept of authentic assessment based on what we have learned from Kalohia project and the Erasmus grant. All right, the second part, we are trying to reflect on the importance of authentic assessment in the attainment of learning outcomes. So both of us, um, together with Dr. Asniza, we are going to cover uh, these two aspects, but from the different perspective and different angles. Hopefully that will enrich our discussion later on at the end of uh, uh, our presentation. All right, so before we move on, I think just uh, to introduce what is Kalohia, is about measuring and comparing achievements of learning outcomes in the higher education in Asia. All right, so this is something that uh, we are doing uh, with our institutional partners across Asia, uh, ASEAN. All right, so um, the aim is basically to contribute uh, to the internalizations of higher education across ASEAN and hopefully will improve the recognitions of higher education decrease across the countries in the region, right? So, so this is basically um, the main purpose. 
And then just to let you know, uh, we are not alone. Basically, we have so many institutions involved in this uh, project uh, across the ASEAN. And um, I think in, 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 in group, we can uh, classify into civil engineering, medicine and teacher education, Dr. Asmiza from teacher education, myself from medicine, and uh, I think last month, Dr. Masura et al. and the gang basically from civil engineering. So we involved uh, in this project. And uh, just uh, to summarize what we did, and then what we are going to cover is one of the area, right? So basically we have so many um, tasks um, to, you know, to carry out. So basically uh, we are at the first and the third one. I think the third one is more focus on authentic assessment. So basically we are going to share what we have found and we are providing our own insight as well into the project so that uh, we, we hopefully learn more uh, when we put our insight into the project. All right, so these are basically the things that uh, we did before uh, from the competency, the workload, authentic assessment, and the installment of authentic assessment in the program. Uh, and today we are going to focus on the authentic assessment and how do we uh, try it out uh, to install the authentic assessment in our own practice. All right, so um, this is a Kaloya experience. Uh, throughout uh, this sharing session, I'm going to share what we did and what are the findings and what are the insights so we can uh, we can learn from that all right so there are four things basically um, we did together with other uh, counterparts from asean other asean countries so we we discuss about what makes assess assessment authentic and then um, how we diagnose uh, the current assessment practice in relation to authentic assessment and what the action plans toward installment of authentic assessment and then what are the expansional examples of authentic assessment that we can learn from, right? So this is basically things that I'm going to cover. Um, the first part is when we are dealing with authentic assessment, most of us will ask about what makes assessment authentic. So basically from what we learn from this project, um, the, the, the thing is about real life context. Whenever we assess students, it must be within the real life context, real world context. And then the real world tasks or activities that are given to the students for them to demonstrate certain uh, competency. And then we assess as an assessor on their competency using the rubric, you know. And then uh, sometimes we use a kind of simulations uh, that is realistic enough to mimic the situation for the students to perform. Um, the uh, whatever task that we ask them to do. And um, in relation to three, three, uh, three features of authentic assessment, usually it should be based on performance standards. So it link back with the quality assurance uh, competency uh, that is required for any graduates, uh, depend on the field, all right? So myself from the medical, we have our own competency, teacher education, they have their own, civil engineering, they have their own, and maybe your field also, you have your own competency. And the standard is basically telling us about what student learns and how to apply their skills in authentic tasks and projects, right? So there is something that uh, we are talking about when we are looking at assessment, uh, at authentic assessment, right? And then it is required and it should allow the student to pro uh, to provide the, uh, to get valuable feedbacks from the teachers. So basically, when we talk about authentic assessment, there is element of providing valuable feedbacks to the student for them to improve. You know, uh, whatever the gaps they have, they can close the gaps and they can become better. And um, in the process of um, installment or we call it implementing authentic assessment. Uh, at the first place, we were requ uh, we were requested to see what are the current practices that we are doing right now in relation to the attainment of learning outcome. So basically, there's a uh, basically we are identifying uh, all the authentic assessment practices uh, across the ASEAN countries 
uh, with a guided and structured um, you know, ways, all right? So the first thing uh, we do is we are looking at is there, uh, you know, is there any familiarity of our academic aim institution with regard to authentic assessment? So it is about familiarity. And then the second one we are required to see, is there any examples to showcase as an authentic assessment in our own practice? And then is there any ways that we can do to make it better so that we can move closer to the authentic assessment on the learning outcomes attainment, right? So in our own context. So basically this is something that we did. And in addition to that, uh, basically, we were provided with diagnostic survey. Uh, so basically, it's a kind of the same question we can ask ourselves, basically. There's a very simple question, four questions. How familiar are we with the notion of authentic assessment? So there's something that, you know, we need to ask ourselves. Uh, can we explain, uh, maybe in a couple of sentences, what authentic assessment is and what makes assessment authentic in our own context? It's something that you might want to reflect as well. And then can we describe an assessment task that we consider it as authentic? And sometimes, you know, maybe you can uh, provide a kind of a bit narrative about what it makes as authentic assessment. And uh, based on our own experience, what are the advantages and of using authentic assessment? These are four questions basically we ask ourselves to reflect. And if we can answer, we mean that we are in a certain level, but we, if we cannot answer that, it's okay because uh, we are still learning on authentic assessment. And then after that, we follow a group discussion. There's something that we did. Uh, and uh, afterward, I'm going to share uh, what we found, all right? So, and definitely my own contact is uh, from the medical side. So I'm going to share a lot more about the medical side, but I'm trying to put it in the general term so that uh, we can learn together from there. All right, so this is something that, <clears throat> you know, uh, when we um, uh, send uh, the, the questions to our colleagues in medical school, so how familiar are you with the term authentic assessment? So it's more than half, basically, it's a new term. Basically, we are quite new to this. And then uh, about one quarter, is a, they, they say that sounds familiar, heard before, but not really know what is it, all right? And then 8.7 says, yes, a familiar, and we can explain what is it, and uh, zero about awareness it is practiced in the institution. And uh, they, most of them cannot give example, right? So there's a kind of scenario that we have. And then when we go for the group discussion, when we talk about what makes authentic assessment, all right, so they say about genuine, meaningful application, real scenario, and you need to have a rubric that reflects the real life scenario that we use for making judgment on the student performance. So these are basically what makes from the perspective of um, our academics, uh, especially from the uh, medical side here. And the, on the other side, how to move it closer and why you think uh, it is important. And there is something that uh, commonly being uh, mentioned by the uh, by the participant is a better assessment. I uh, you know it will build uh, better competency, prepare student for real world scenario later on. It's valued by employers because the graduate is being prepared for the real world uh, scenario, and then it instills confidence and skill to the graduates when we give the authentic assessment. So there's a kind of the why part. Uh, the thing authentic assessment is important. Now, and these are examples um, of uh, you know, the authentic assessment being practiced in here in um, medicine, especially. And uh, I believe that every field have their own. Uh, Dr. Asniza will tell us more about the teacher education side later on. All right. And then uh, from this process, from this process, what actually authentic assessment, all right? So throughout this process, we discuss uh, with um, colleagues from different regions, uh, no, same region, but different countries. And then we come to a consensus. What is authentic assessment? The first one is when the assessment allows students to apply the knowledge in the real life context. It means that 
whatever the knowledge that we give to the students, it must be applicable in the real world context. All right, so there is something related to, to knowledge. And the second uh, features of authentic assessment we can learn from this exercise, the assessment allows students to demonstrate skill in the real life context. It means that it's not enough knowledge. The knowledge must be able to support the performance of the students when they execute certain skills in the real life context. All right, so it's not only knowledge, but the skills. And the third features uh, that we learn from this process when we discuss is about the assessment allows students to perform responsibilities in the real life context. That's the most important things that we learned from this project. It's not only uh, knowledge, it's not only skills, but they need to be able to demonstrate and to perform the expected responsibilities when they are in the field. So there's a kind of authentic assessment that we found in terms of when we defining the authentic assessment through this process. So basically these are three things, three features that we identified common to all members, including even though it's in the civil engineering and teacher education, more or less when we discuss this come repeatedly being mentioned all right, by, by most of the participants in the project. So I think uh, based on these three features, now we are uh, moving toward mapping of what are the good practices of authentic assessment uh, with regard to certain competency framework that we develop. All right. So basically, I'm going to share one by one, but I'm not going to detail, but just to showcase that there are so many ways we can do to make our assessment authentic. All right, so this is an example from the medical side. So basically these are the subject specific um, qualification reference framework that we developed through this process. So, so this are competency is very important because the competency will somehow lead us to what assessment we need to, um, need to install or we need to implement to ensure that what we assess the students is fulfilling the three criteria, says now the three features of the authentic assessment. So from here we have um, you know, a kind of um, framework here, but I think it is not that important to know the framework because these are for the medicine um, and every field you have your own competency framework. But the most important is here, because when we map across the countries, uh, that's involved in this project, we can see that these are um, the examples of good practices in authentic assessment, in uh, specifically for the medicine. So we can see that when it comes to the knowledge related to health and well-being, there are lists of authentic assessment that being implemented in ASEAN. So these are quite uh, a useful list for us to think and to learn from each other, right? And this is about health and well-being. And it comes to the ethics and humanities mm -hmm. across the three main domain, knowledge, skill, and responsibility. Actually, there are quite many of the authentic assessment that we can try, we can somehow emulate, uh, or maybe we can adopt and adapt into our context. And similarly to the integrated medical knowledge, um, to the clinical practices, there are a lot, actually, there are a lot, quality practices, and even professional behavior, there are quite many on the list. So basically, when we learn from each other, it gives us a lot more options that we can utilize, that we can use to improve the way we assess our students in an authentic manner, All right? So there's a kind of... Uh, the we call it the assessment that fulfilled the three features of authentic assessment we mentioned just now right and moving forward actually when we realize all the lists all right so we have the list and now it's about developing our action plans uh, to implement the authentic assessment right so basically what we uh, what we um, you know task to do is basically we need to develop for our own program, action plans, and then 
we need to identify what are the areas that we need to address in our own context. And then what are the unique things that we think is very important in uh, relation to our contact needs and priorities. So basically there's something that uh, we uh, went through and for example, just now from the survey, remember just now, so we found that um, um, I think more than half of our faculty members are not um, aware of what is authentic assessment and uh, one third of them basically cannot explain what the concept of authentic assessment. So what we do is something like this, all right? For example, we get all peoples into the workshops and then uh, we do a kind of awareness raising actions introduce authentic assessment at course level and then we introduce authentic assessment at the program level as well by doing for example our orish uh, workshop and then we are reviewing the authentic assessment practices in our own program and make some improvement out of it because you know when we learn from the rest of uh, you know of the other counterparts from ASEAN countries so uh, it's basically it's easier for us to uh, know to provide a better explanation to our colleagues in our own setting right and we did some kind of compilations of inspiration example of authentic assessment and uh, from there so if you still remember just now we have so many lists so many items on the list just now so what we did is so basically we are looking at which one is really inspiring and you know uh, something that we can um, showcase as a, a kind of best practice maybe that will uh, reflect the authenticity of the assessment um, with regard to the real world uh, practice all right related to the uh, competency framework so um, the main aim of the uh, of the authentic assessment uh, example for the inspiring one is basically to foster meaningful learning experience and to prepare the graduates for the real world challenges. So this is something that uh, we are looking at for the inspirational examples. And we managed to come up with uh, seven uh, inspirational examples of authentic assessment. We have uh, three from Malaysia, uh, two from USM, one from UM. Uh, one from Philippines, uh, one from Indonesia, uh, two actually from the Indonesia and one from the Vietnam. And uh, if you're looking at this, basically the uh, kind of a brief description about each that I'm, I like to share here. If you're looking at community and family case study, so what makes it authentic because they allow the students to perform the skills in the real patients. All right, so analyzing complex patient cases within the context of the families and community. So basically, is go to the ground immediately in the community and the family. So the assessment being done in that setting. And it come to the shots with Shadow House Officer Training System. So basically, they will allow the student to immerse in the clinical, real clinical environments allowing them to shadow experienced healthcare professionals and participate in real-time patient care activities and they are being assessed in this context, all right? And health social science project, so basically they are allowed, uh, they, they ask the student to do some sort of exploration on the ethical and humanistic aspect of the healthcare through interdisciplinary research and reflection and they are being assessed in that context. So you mean that the real world context and pre-internship in UM is student will be collaborating with other healthcare professionals from different disciplines that's encouraged our interdisciplinary collaborations in managing complex patient cases. All right. So using evidence-based approach and they were assessed based on this. And 360 degree is more toward assessment that took uh, they take a multiple stakeholders, um, you know, ratings, including the peers, supervisors, patients, self-assessment, and based on that, they will evaluate the student professional behaviors and values. It's a part of assessment as well. And the TMAX, the teamwork mini clinical evaluation exercise also allow the students uh, to be assessed in collaborative manner while taking care of patients. All right. 
And the last one, um, scholar research project is more toward research. The student have to do it. And then that challenge the student to investigate healthcare management issues. And based on that, there will be assessed in terms of uh, specifically on the financial aspect and critical thinking skills. I think there is something that uh, make them um, you know, eligible for the inspiration example of authentic assessment. And if you are looking at the across the example just now, it is basically to uh, indicate that um, there are so many ways of doing um, authentic assessment, depending on the competency. There are various ways to approach for authentic assessment and to uh, somehow to um, make judgment on the student competencies based on the competency framework just now, right? So there are many ways, uh, and I think uh, we should not limit ourselves to certain uh, rigid authentic assessment method, but actually there's a lot of things we can do as long as it fulfills the features of the authentic assessment just now, all right? And if you're looking at the implementation level, so basically we map our level of implementation at our institutions. So we put awareness level, cost level, program level, institutional level, and we did map. So basically, if you're looking at UM, UMPAD, UNHAS, they are actually at the awareness level, right? And UMP from uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, West Visayas from Philippines, and USM at the cost level. And I think at this moment, USM is uh, a bit advanced compared to the rest because we are not only cost level, but at the program level. But uh, none of the institution are at the institutional level. It means that its majority is at um, a PTJ level rather than at the institution level, at the university level. I think there's something that uh, the data is telling us that it's not uh, too late for us to start uh, to implement authentic assessment if you want, because every institution have their own, um, you know, have their own constraint, have their own limitation when it comes to the implementations of authentic assessment. And as a, just a sharing of one of the inspirational example just now in USM Community Family Case Study, CFCS, we call it. These are basically the competency related to community care. So basically, um, you know, the student will be in the uh, society doing some project and being assessed according to this flow. And for example, there are group presentation, there are, you know, community diagnosis, plan for community intervention, and then uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, assessment involved when uh, we are dealing with assessment of uh, community care uh, related competency, all right? So I think, this is quite robust and everyone need to do something uh, to the society and they are being uh, assessed based on what they have done, all right? And why is authentic assessment? Because they are in the community, the real one, and then they apply whatever the knowledge and skill in the real uh, environments and every community, every individual in the community has different health needs, therefore they need to understand the needs of the community before they can implement any intervention that will be evaluated by uh, the lecturers, all right? And why is authentic assessment? Because real world application, authentic audience, which is the society and the patient in the society, they are dealing with stage at different setting, depending on the needs of the community and it's a kind of hands-on task. It means that they need to apply whatever they learned and whatever they have uh, you know, uh, in terms of the skills in the real settings, and that will have um, immediate impacts on the community, All right? And they are taking their own uh, responsibility when it comes to implementing the interventions, and that will be evaluated as well, right? So a kind of insight that I would like to uh, highlight, three insight that I got from this, uh, you know, this process, uh, throughout uh, the project for the past three years. One is uh, the authentic assessment is important because it will ensure that graduates 
are fully prepared to take on the real world challenges when they you know taking up the job or maybe the the responsibilities as a professional in the society and then the second one is authentic assessment provide a means for us to evaluate students readiness more efficiently i think there is something that uh, we know exactly what, how they apply the knowledge how they demonstrate the skills in the right way or not and how they execute or maybe perform the duty as someone in the field in the future right and then uh, as a kind of you know we can foster a workforce that consistently deliver the highest level of services uh, to the profession especially to the society i think there is something that uh, you know throughout uh, the process we can learn from this and my take home message all right so basically when we talk about authentic assessment it's about assessing learning outcomes in the real life context i mean the authentic context and then in terms of reflecting on our own practices i think we need to evaluate our current assessment practices so that we can make some alignment a better alignment with the authentic assessment principles as well as authentic assessments for uh, the attainment of learning outcomes is very important and then authentic assessment implementation need to engage different stakeholders efficiently need to coordinate continuously with uh, you know with uh, relevant parties so that we can implement the authentic assessment at our own uh, level but correspond to what has been practices at the regional and global level I think that's all from my side that I would like to share. Hopefully that uh, useful enough uh, to cover the two scopes of this webinar. All right, so I will stop uh, at this point uh, to allow Dr. Asmiza to continue with uh, her sharing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hey, um, uh, so I will continue, is it? All right. Uh, thank you, PM, uh, Dr. Saiful. Very uh, sharp timing. Yeah, exactly for PM, um, you stop. That's very good. So allow me to uh, share my screen. All right. Um, I hope all of you can see my screen. Is it appear? Yes. Your screen. Okay, yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So uh, again, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and very good evening. Um, thank you to CDE for hosting this uh, webinar regarding uh, insight from Kalohia project on authentic assessments. So we have heard a lot from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Saiful regarding the three years project of Kalohia, and uh, that is from the perspective of medical. So uh, now it's my turn. Uh, I am Nur Asniza Isha. I'm from School of Educational Studies, which is part of a Kalohia project under teacher education's um, team. And uh, I've been working closely also together with PM Dr. Saiful and the rest of the team from uh, USM and also from other university in Malaysia as well as other Southeast Asian countries for this Kalohia project. So um, today I'm going to just share about um, what have been uh, we, what have we done throughout the process of um, conducting this project of Kalohia, particularly on uh, authentic assessment for teacher education. So perhaps throughout the webinar. Uh, you can get a little bit of information regarding what is authentic assessments, uh, what are essential skills and knowledge that we know about authentic assessment and how we can implement it in our uh, institution, particularly in our course. So the contents of this webinar will be the same as what have mentioned by uh, PM Dr. Saiful in the first session of this webinar, where uh, firstly, I'm going to explain on the Kalohia project uh, implementation of authentic assessment for international recognition for teacher educations 
and then um, going through the best practices of enhancing learning outcomes by authentic assessments for international recognition for teacher education. Even though uh, I'm focusing on teacher education, but perhaps what um, all of you, the participants can um, receive from this webinar is what is authentic assessment and how maybe you can get some idea on um, what are examples that you can implement it in the course that you are teaching in your institution. Just a recap on what is actually authentic assessments, things that have been um, explained and discussed by uh, Dr. Seifel just now. Yeah. So they, when we are talking about uh, authentic assessments, of course, it's a type of evaluations. And as an academician, we know that um, evaluation can be divided into two types, which are uh, formative uh, assessments or evaluation and summative assessments and evaluation. So some people may have uh, some kind of misconception saying that authentic assessment is just appropriate to be conducted under the um, uh, formative assessments only and not appropriate under summative assessment. But if you're really looking into the real definitions of what is actually authentic assessment, which has already been um, explained by uh, Dr. Saiful, it comes from, or it's the, the aim is to measure our students' understanding as well as their skills. And understanding and these skills should be measured in the real world context in the context where the, the, the students live in, in the context where when we do authentic assessment, it is something related to what's going on around the students. Yeah. So creating the condition for authentic assessments is actually different. Yeah, it depends on what kind of courses, what kind of phenomena, what kind of situations that you are intended to do your evaluation uh, in your course. But um, just to give you some information about the conditions that you can use in order to perform authentic assessments in, in order to encourage students' knowledge and skills in the real context on the real world. Of course, it has to be real world relevance, which focuses on real world tasks and applications. Yeah. So mainly in authentic assessment is about how you apply it, how you apply how the students apply the knowledge and skill that they have learned in certain courses into the real world. And then it can also involve performance base, which requires students to demonstrate their knowledge through practical tasks or project, yeah? which shifting from traditional testing methods to hands-on is more learning by doing. That's why they need to do a hands-on or actively involve or engage in a certain uh, task that you are giving to them. That's why we call it a performance base. It can also be a contextualized learning where connect assessment tasks to the actual contents and context of learning, which encourages students to apply knowledge in authentic situation. The words authentic means real life context, yeah? And it can also be applied in multiple mod modalities, which allow diverse ways of demonstrating understanding of whatever uh, theory or input that we have given to the students, such as giving them project, a presentations, a portfolios, which recognizes different learning style and strength from the student themselves. And it should be ongoing and cumulative, which often involve assessment over time rather than relying on a single test. So that's why uh, authentic assessments uh, to me, well, at this kind of um, situation, I think is very reliable for us to assess our students because it's um, over time. Yeah, it's assessments over time, like what Pro, uh, Dr. Saiful has mentioned just now. It's just not that like we give them a task and that's it. We're just going to leave the students like that. We will assess them and ask them to do some more improvement so that they become better and better from time to time. And it also recognizes the cumulative nature of learning skill development. That, that is what we want to do in authentic assessment. We want to sharpen, we want to enhance the student knowledge and skill from time to time by doing not just one test, but you know, um, many times of tests. Then we can give feedbacks and reflections to the students. Yeah. We give feedback for them to improve. Yeah. And uh, encourage them to reflect on their uh, learning process. It involves collaborative uh, because most of authentic assessments are group projects. 
it involves collaborations, it involves com communications, it involves teamwork, and this will, you know, sharpens or emphasizes the interpersonal skills like what mentioned in the 21st century learning skills. Holistic assessment, this is another thing that I like about authentic assessments because we evaluate the overall performance rather than isolated components, even though we call it assignment, but under assignment, there are so many components that we can evaluate the students and considers the integration of knowledge and skills. Also involve cultural sensitivity because we take account uh, cultural and contextual differences in assessment tasks. And of course, we value diverse perspectives and experiences that we um, I mean, they've been shown by the students throughout the assessment. And finally, it is authentic authenticity in evaluation because it strives to minimize artificial or contrived assessment scenarios. Yeah. So that is a little bit about just a refreshment on what is authentic assessment based on um, what we have discussed throughout this Kalohia project. And now I want to uh, highlight the, the Kalohia project components where it involved the implementations of authentic assessment for international recognition of teacher education. And in doing this, actually, um, under Kalohia project, we have three recognition mechanisms. We have recognition mechanism one that looking into the framework of the teacher education. Second recognition mechanism is to look at the uh, student learning times. Yeah. And the RM3 or recognition mechanism three is looking into authentic assessments that um, how we can implement this AUA, authentic assessment internationally uh, comparable learning outcome in degree program. So the same uh, uh, the same process have been conducted by the three teams of medical, civil engineering, and also teacher education, where we need to run a diagnostic test, and then um, we have to develop an action plan, and finally creating compilation of inspirational examples. So I'm going to focus on what have been done throughout these three years looking into task one, task two, task three, and what we did after that through um, action plan. So same things happen under medical and also teacher education. Just would like to share what we have gathered from this uh, project. Um, in identifying the current practices of authentic assessment, um, we, USM um, team under teacher education, also have conducted diagnostic tests to see how familiar academics in our institutional team or in USM uh, with authentic assessments and then uh, identify example of authentic assessment that currently been practices in the programs and to reflect on ways to move closer to authentic assessment of learning outcome. So if in the future any one of you would like to conduct any research regarding authentic assessment, perhaps you can use this kind of um, flow yeah, of doing this research. Of course, we have to identify or to diagnose the current situation before we can uh, proceed with the next step of our plan. And for this diagnostic test, maybe I could just can share a little bit what we have gathered from the um, institutional team under teacher education. It involves um, academician in science education program in School of Educational Studies. But when we are talking about our science education program, it doesn't solely involve academician from School of Educational Studies. But this particular um, survey it also involves uh, academician from uh, schools of uh, physics, yeah? school of Hakaji um, Hayat, uh, bio. Uh, chemistry and also mathematics because um, under science education, the student has also have to take the content paper from uh, other school than uh, PPIP. So these are the finding of, have you heard of the term authentic assessments? I think the similar result uh, show from uh, medical as well. Only 50% said that they have heard about authentic assessment. Not sure about another 50%. Yeah? And do you understand the concept of authentic assessment? Yep, because 50% said they have heard it. So uh, it's predicted that 50% know the concept of authentic assessment. And uh, do you think authentic assessment is beneficial to assess student learning? Yep, surprisingly, 100%, even though they do not know familiar with the terms of 100% said, yep. They agree that it will give a lot of benefits to the students' learning. So this is the finding of a survey. And then we continue with um, another uh, survey to see, yeah, try to explore 
uh, what are examples of authentic assessments that already been used by academic to assess students' uh, progress uh, uh, achievement of their learning outcome? So even though 50% said they never heard of authentic assessment, but when we asked, do you integrate authentic assessment into your undergraduate courses assessment method? 75% said so, even though it's something contradict with the first question uh, where they don't heard it, but they do uh, integrate it. So I... From here, I can say that there is still a bit of confusion or maybe some conflict of understanding of what is authentic assessment and what they apply in uh, assessing the students' uh, learning outcome in their course. And uh, for answering yes, yeah, for those who are answering yes, uh, I we ask them to list down what are the current or example of authentic assessment that they have practices uh, for assessing the learning outcomes. And these are the examples, um, project-based learning, or representation, reflections, portfolios, mini research, video production, quiz, test, and simulated teaching. So this is um, particularly in the context of teacher education, yeah? And um, we ask again, yeah? Uh, ways to move closer to authentic assessment of learning outcomes in the context that they have learned currently in the course. They did mention that um, they want to practice experiential learning and problem-based learning, especially for the coursework. They did mention that. And they want to encourage students to discover real issue in the school as their future setting and keep to provide valuable feedback to students for their coursework and tasks and academic must clear with performance standards. So if you look at the reflections of uh, move closer to authentic assessment academician from USM, it does show As um, I mentioned under this Kalohia project, we have three recognition mechanisms. The first one is to come out with the regional teacher education qualification uh, reference framework. And then we include the dimensions and also sub dimension to be inserted in the qualification reference framework of this year education program. So that is what we did under uh, recognition mechanism one. Yeah, we come up with our own um, tissue education group uh, recognition mechanism one of the framework. And maybe it's different from what uh, Dr. Saiful have highlighted under medicals. In our teacher education, we have come up with seven dimensions in measuring the knowledge, skill, as well as responsibility that we can use in um, uh, measuring the teacher education uh, program across Asian countries. So in dimension one is about knowledge, mastery, management and creation. I I'm not going to explain in detail each and every one of the dimension and sub dimension, just going to highlight on the seven dimensions. And then dimension two is more into um, design, development, implementation and evaluation of curricular components and uh, processes related to learning, teaching, and assessment. Under, uh, sorry, um, Larry Skid. Under Dimension 3, learner enabling growth and holistic development. Dimension 4, on communications. Dimension 5, on community engagement and social leadership. Dimension 6, ethics and professionalism. Dimension 7, lifelong learning, human, in, uh, human formation and well-being. 
And that's the seven dimensions that we have come out under this uh, framework that we can use across teacher education program in Southeast uh, Asia country. So for that, based on these seven dimensions under this framework, I would like to share my deductive approach of explaining the inside of this authentic assessment that we can map with these uh, seven dimensions of the framework of teacher education. So I'm going to explain with the bigger perspective, which is example of common practice of authentic assessment in teacher education, narrow it down to the current practice of uh, authentic assessment in teacher education, and then I'm, I would like to share uh, my current practice of authentic assessments in my course, which is a uh, biology teaching methods. So let's look at example of practices on authentic assessment in teacher education. Right. Um, we, like what Dr. Saiful has mentioned just now, we have several meetings with all the Kalohia institutional teams and we have into consensus of uh, findings of example of authentic assessment among academic, sorry, among academic um, in Kalohia team from other countries. So for this, we have listed down around 12 examples of authentic assessments that we practice in each institution. The first one is reflect real classroom situation because um, I'm telling this example that is highlighted to the teacher education, but somehow it's also aligned with other courses as well. So the first one is reflects real classroom situation, which is really authentic, yeah? And then uh, portfolio assessments, video analysis, simulated teaching experiences, collaborative projects, authentic lesson planning, action research project, observation and feedback, performance tasks, continuous assessment, internship experiences, teaching practicum, and peer review. So you may want to know why some, I mean, from these 12, um, findings of example AUA among all Kalohia institution teams in Southeast Asia, why I highlighted in greens, yeah? Portfolio assessment, simulated teaching experiences, authentic lesson planning, uh, internship experiences, teaching practicum. This is because these four, the one that I highlighted in greens, um, where we discussed among all the institutional team of Kalohia project, we found that most of the university use this four kind or four example of authentic assessments to assess a learning outcome of teacher education program. Yeah, so those are the findings from the AUA of uh, teacher education. Now let's moving on to the current practice of AUA in teacher education in USM. Yeah, so what do academicians of USM practice? In uh, Southeast Asia for Kaloya project, we have about uh, just now we say 12, but in Malaysia, in USM, these are examples of authentic assessment tasks linked to learning outcomes shared by respondents. Yeah? Project-based learning, oral presentation, reflections, portfolio, mini research, video production, quiz, test, lesson planning, and simulated teaching. So even though the surveys show that from the diagnosis test, uh, some lecturers, half of it, do not know what is authentic assessment, but from the example, we can found that uh, actually lecturers in USM, particularly that the one that teaching teacher education, practices a lot of example of authentic assessment, which is which were uh, we were very happy at that time. Yeah, we are very proud to share this information with the other institution of Kalohia. And from the findings of focus group discussion among academics uh, in USM, we try to map it with the uh, the example of authentic assessment with the framework of teacher education that we have come up in the recognition mechanism one, and yes, the four the four kinds of authentic assessment that we identify actually match with the four famous authentic assessment that have been practices in teacher education program across Southeast Asia uh, institution, which the first one is specific project in real settings. Yeah, because this specific project in real setting met with uh, sub dimension 1.1, 1.2, 2.1, 2.2, .2, which focus on the knowledge and also skill, which align with the definition of authentic assessment, where in authentic assessment, we want to enhance the, the, the knowledge and skill of the student through real world setting. So it's clear, it, it's, it's aligned with the uh, framework that we have developed under teacher education. And then the second uh, example, 
that USM practices is oral presentation in the classroom, which match with subdimension 1.2, also knowledge and skill, where we want to fulfill the performance standard, best learning platform to apply the student's knowledge and skill through oral presentation in the classroom. And the third example of authentic assessment that has been practiced by the clinician in USN for teacher education is lesson planning and simulated teaching as part of the coursework. So when we met with the front framework, this kind of authentic assessment matched with subdimension 1.1 and also subdimension 1.2, which is the knowledge and also the skills. But with this kind of authentic assessment, we want the students to sharpen their knowledge and skill in terms of to be realistic and to be, you know, uh, familiar with the simulated situation. And finally, we are, uh, we we uh, enhance the learning outcomes in teaching education by uh, ask the students to do internship experiences, of course, but particularly in teacher education, we call it as teaching practicum. Yeah, we call it teaching practicum, which also highly related to the sub dimension to knowledge and skills of the student where students have experience in real life context with real world tasks and activities so when we do this yeah looking into the perspective of the um, broader perspective of uh, teacher education authentic assessment across southeast asia yep they currently practices four main authentic assessments which yeah alhamdulillah align with what we have been practices in usm okay well, it involved, uh, I told you just now, which involved the uh, specific project in real setting or representation in the class, lesson planning and simulated teaching and internship, or we call it as teaching practicum in teacher education. And now moving on into the AUA in one course. So what do I practice in my course? Um, maybe just to get you uh, uh, an idea how, uh, the, the teacher educations in USM involving uh, authentic assessment for the uh, assessing the learning outcome can be done in biology teaching method that is my course PG 315E which conducted in semester two and um, for the whole semester I'm using two type of authentic assessments which are preparing lesson plan and conducting simulated teaching yeah for preparing the, the students to the real context or real life and also doing a project which is digital biology project. So this is just my pictures of my students throughout the uh, process of impl implementing authentic assessment for this color here project under my course. And just would like to share you my CLO for this pgt 15 e where the authentic assessment cover three out of four of the course learning outcome using assignment and project where CLO2 for the lesson planning CLO3 uh, for the students to produce ideas or project, a uh, product through project, and CLO4 for the biology simulated te teaching. Yeah. So assignments and project would be the authentic assessments that I um, do for assessing my students' learning outcome. So looking into the detailed explanation, maybe I'll not go into detail, but what I did in lesson planning and simulated teaching, I asked the students to choose any biology topic which I will give them, um, the right highly related to the curriculums of uh, Form 4 and Form 5 Biology. And then they need to plan a lessons and provide teaching aids to perform an instruction that should demonstrate effective teaching practices. And the students, because it's simulated teaching, they have to play role of a teacher while the rest of the students will cooperate becoming a student. Yeah, so it's, it's like a real condition of a normal classroom. And I encourage them to use ICT uh, to aid their teaching process. So these are the list of the topics I gave them. Uh, they have the uh, autonomy to choose the topic that they want to do the lesson planning and also the simulated teaching, but I will make sure that it's not redundant with other group. So one group can have one topic only and it's not the same with other groups. Yeah, And they will do the lesson plan. I will check the lesson plan before the simulated teaching. And then after that, I, I, when I approve the lesson plan, they will conduct the simulated teaching as if in the, the real classroom. And of course, after that, this is the important parts of doing authentic assessment is that for me, the student needs to do reflection after the class. So practicing reflections on action and lesson study approach uh, has been adapted because 
we want uh, the students to you know uh get feedback from the lecturers get feedback from the the, the members from their friends and improve themselves so that they know what are the wrongdoings that they have done and how to improve it. So I would like to introduce you with the word holistic assessment, meaning that even though the name of the assignment that I use for my CLO is assignment, but under this assignment, I have many assessment. I have preparation of lesson plan, which we teach 10%, presentation of simulated teaching, which is we teach 10%, and the reflection is 10% as well. So overall, the total um, percentage of this authentic assessments or evaluation is 30%. So this reflections, not just coming from me, is also coming from the students, I mean their friends, and also from the teacher acting like a teacher, the students that act like a teacher during the simulated teaching. So I, 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 I'm happy to say that authentic assessment can be done through holistic assessment as well yeah so um these are some of the videos of my simulated teaching in teacher educations uh i have um, i mean the students are doing simulated teaching for hemostasis process under three conditions a normal resting and also running yeah and then a hologram kit for demonstrated movement relay of neuron in nervous system perhaps i just can play one video yeah so this is the simulated teaching process that have been conducted in the classroom. The teach, uh, this one of the students act as teacher and the other act as a uh, uh, student. Yeah. So I've been evaluating them, and after that, of course, we listen reflection from all of the uh, class as well. And then the second part is the digital biology uh, portfolio project. Um, this is, I think, something familiar with what we have done before. I mean, we want the students to compile all the lesson plan for certain teaching certain topic using technology such as Microsoft's way or Google site. And, um, and we, we guide them. Yeah, we guide them how to do this uh, portfolio. And we also encourage them to enhance their, the, the e-portfolio by integrating collaboration skill, communication skill, critical skill, for knowledge construction, problem solving skill, and self-regulated learning skill because they are future teachers, so they should be implementing something related to 21st century skill. Again, I apply this holistic assessments, even though it's uh, just a project under my uh, assessment of my uh, BPK, but underneath this project, I divide it into um, the technology that they use for teaching and learning activities, which is weighting 10%, and lesson plan and reflection, which Weighting, uh, weight, the weightage is 10% with a total of 20%. This is what we call as holistic assessment under authentic assessment. So, um, finish with the examples of what I did in my course. But of course, there are questions that we need to discuss when we are trying to do this authentic assessment in our course or in our program. What is the authentic way to assess what teachers know in terms of knowledge, in terms of what they do for their skill and their responsibility according to the competency framework of teacher education recognition mechanism? So, of course, when we design our authentic assessment that we want to use in our course that is used to assess the learning outcome, we must follow certain standard or certain framework. I, I believe civil engineering, they have their own standard. Mechan uh, medical, they have their own standard. As well as teacher education, we have our own standard. We must make sure that our authentic assessment with, is aligned with the framework. But here come another question that we need to discuss. What challenges might exist in using authentic assessment to measure the different dimensions shown in the recognition competency framework for teacher education program? Of course, throughout, we can plan, but we do not know what's going to happen. So what are the challenges that we can identify and how to solve it? Yeah, how to solve the challenges so that all the authentic assessment that we apply in our course would surely follow the framework for the teacher education or any programs that we have designed. So these are the kind of this question, a question that we must think of when we wanted to do an authentic assessment. So perhaps if you have time, we can have feedback from the participants, share your knowledge and practice. And to me, the insight that I got from this Kalohia project, authentic assessment is one assessment that we should focus in terms of evaluating the student's uh, learning outcome that is highly related to our course learning outcome. Outcome, yeah, because the word authentic 
uh, we want to enhance the knowledge, we want to enhance the skill that is really, really related to the real context of the students. So I think that's all from me. Thank you uh, very much. Okay, thank you for Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Saiful and Dr. Nor Azmiza Isha. Okay, um, we are now open for Q and A Q and A session. Uh, if you have any question uh, to our speakers, uh, please unmute yourself and you also can type your question in chat box. Thank you. Is any any uh, question from the audience? Oh, okay, silent mean understood. Yeah, <laughs> you mean that everything has been clearly spelled out and understood? All right. So, uh, kita close lah. Well, eh, yeah. ada siapa siapa lagi? Nah, one or two question, perhaps. No question. They really understand. <laughs> right. So I mean that they fully understood what we shared just now. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, thank you so much, thank everyone. Thank you so much for our speakers. Uh, for the attendees, thank you for your active participant and engagement throughout this session. In closing, let's make its lasting impact on higher education in Asian religion. Okay, we, before we dismiss, please scan the QR code using the USM Passport apps, or you can click the link given in the chat box to verify, verify your atten attendance by today. Also, you have you are required to fill out the e survey in my CPD site. Thank you once again for joining us today. Hope, hope that uh, you found this webinar informative and engaging. Keep an eye for future events from CDAE. Until next time, take care and have a great day. Terima kasih. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Thank See you, everybody. You thank you, Dr. Saiful. Thank you, thank CDE. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.